This is the Kerlan campus in Rennes in the Immermove Experimentation Hall. The facility is unique in the world of academic research. Unique because of its size, 30 meters by 20, which means that it can accommodate a large number of people or analyze sports situations requiring a large space. And unique because this platform is equipped with an uninterrupted virtual reality set. The aim of the researchers working on the platform is to analyze, understand and simulate human movement. What we're looking to create are crowd simulation algorithms that are more and more precise, more and more realistic, and that cover an ever larger set of situations. We need to properly understand how each person moves and how they're influenced by those around them, and that is what we're studying in these laboratory experiments. In this environment, there will be three components. The measurement of movement, the understanding of movement, its modeling, for this we're going to try to use mathematical models, and its simulation in a virtual environment to verify that our mathematical models produce realistic behaviors and have them interact with real people. We really want to see if collective behaviors emerge naturally. So the idea is using this large hall space to try and make the situations a bit more natural, precisely so that we can let things happen naturally and see if we will indeed observe these collective phenomena. The study therefore consists of measuring interactions in the movements of 40 people during various locomotion tasks in a predefined space. Each person is fitted with six markers, two on their shoulders and four on their helmet. These markers enable the precise measurement of the movement in space and over time of each of the subjects that make up the crowd. When they move, all individuals are subject to interactions with those next to them. These interactions have an influence on their movement and, through the knock-on effect of all these individual elements, generate the movement of the group and, on a wider scale, of the crowd. For example, we observed two groups of 20 subjects with secant trajectories. We're focusing our attention on what happens at the intersection and trying to understand how groups of people moving in the same direction emerge from this situation. These are observations that are made in real life but that are difficult to quantify in situ. Today, we also wanted to observe the influence of other factors, such as social factors. We watched a whole group of individuals going through a door, where it is considered polite to let the person in front go first. We're not going to barge our way through to overtake them. There's an order that is set just as people go through the door, and not in advance, and which progressively emerges from this situation. We also sought to understand the notion of neighbors. So, who influences who in the crowd? Or rather, how the movement of each individual is influenced by a group of other individuals around them. We got a group of individuals to move around the hall and we asked them to turn when they wanted or when they collectively decided to do so. We watched how those at the front of the group progressively turned. This then spread towards the back of the group. We capture the movement of the subjects in a very precise manner. We reconstruct these displacement paths and analyze how the interaction of each person with those around them results in these phenomena that are unplanned, not decided by the group, but collectively emergent. Each one of the 32 cameras then captures the scene. The resulting raw data needs to be processed in order to reconstruct the information. By bringing together the four markers placed on the subject's heads and the two on their shoulders, the movement of each person can be obtained in three dimensions. The data can then be interpreted in order to better understand, then simulate crowd movements. 
There are two main categories of simulator. Macroscopic simulators seek to reproduce the way in which the crowd as a whole moves in a given environment. This is therefore simulated in a similar way to a fluid. And microscopic approaches, contrary to macroscopic approaches, seek to simulate the movement of each individual. So we simulate both the movement of each person and the influences on this individual movement from those next to them, i.e. the interactions that take place in a crowd. By simulating individuals and the interactions they have with each other, we can, we're trying to, calculate the movement of the crowd as a whole. There are two main applications for crowd simulators. One is linked to entertainment, typically the cinema, where the idea is to generate movements for numerous characters or a crowd in order to populate the background of a scene, for example. The second main application is architecture and town planning, in order to safely and easily design places intended for use by the general public. The advantage of the team is that we have truly multidisciplinary profiles, and so that really enables us to have all of the analysis and applications chain within the same team. This gives the team a cross-disciplinary vision, from crowd simulator experimentation to biomechanical analysis of the data. Furthermore, in the virtual reality area, emergent laws of movement during experimentation can be simulated on the virtual set, in order to validate behaviors in an immersive environment. The future is to continue to improve the quality of the measurements while giving the subject as much freedom as possible, and then, most importantly, to make the link with the immersive aspect. This will enable us to put people in situations that are totally controlled on an immersive level while still being close to a natural situation, hoping that virtual reality is close to real life.